Hello everybody, I'm back again with another one. This is not something from the ancient vaults over here. This is a new acquisition. And this particular specimen is thanks to a Mr. GS, you know who you are. We have another pattern 1938 Turkish military rifle. This one is not based on the old uh, German 1898, but rather the Gewehr 1888, as you can see by the exposed magazine housing there. Now, like all the pattern 1938 rifles the Turks use, this one is rebuilt. It is not in its original configuration. Gone is the barrel shroud of the original 1888 and various other things. And it's been upgraded to all the standard upgrades that these had. And it's in particularly good shape. And it is, of course, chambered for 8mm, just like the German ones were. 7.92mm. Now, these ones, you can actually be sure without having to slug them that the bore has been opened up to 323. While that's something you can't always be entirely certain of with the original German ones, because they were slightly smaller bore for the old pattern cartridge. But all of these Turkish rifles had brand new batter barrels installed, and they are all for the standard eight millimeter cartridge. Now, some daring people will go ahead and fire the Turkish rounds in this rifle. And, uh, <laughs> well, I'm not one of them, I will shoot this with commercial rounds or my own reloads but there's a very old receiver on there and i just don't have 100 percent confidence that it's going to hold together with a steady diet of hot rounds when it's had god knows how many already so i take it easy on these old these old war rifles and i stay with low pressure rounds that's basically any commercial round the commercial ammunition from remington and winchester federal it's all made for this rifle these 1888s because they know when they make it that somebody somewhere is going to stuff that round in an original German rifle and possibly blow themselves up, so they make them lower pressures for these. They don't make them for the 1898s, which can take just about anything. They make them for these. Now, as you can see, the Turks did. Uh, they, uh, they put a new barrel on there. They got rid of the steel barrel jacket of the 1888 original. They retained everything else on the receiver. And what we have here, this is made at Ankara in 1941. Let's see if I can get a close-up there on the markings. Oh, there we go. We can see them. And the usual Turkish marking. This is a later rework. Some of the earlier ones had different markings. This one, still ha this has all Turkish markings on it. 1941 Ankara. It doesn't seem to have been used very much. Now, the rumor on these has it that the receivers were reheat treated by the Turks. Now, maybe they were. I don't know. I have absolutely no information that says for sure that that work was done. But you can see, if you look here, that ring there, that is a weld. They had to do that in order to fit the handguard ring to these receivers because the originals, like I said, had a screwed-in barrel jacket, and it would be threads here. But now they've put this nice ring here. They welded it there. So it is possible they had to reheat treat it after doing that. And you can see right here, we have the stripper clip guide. This uses the same standard stripper clip as any Gewehr 98. It has a nice cutout here, which is something the Germans didn't do. The Germans made a little depression here. The Turks made a nice proper cutout so your finger can clear easily when you're shoving that clip down in there, or rather the rounds from the clip. Standard two locking lugs on the bolt, like all Gewehr 88s. That's a German bolt on there, by the way. It has the block off plate on the bottom, which was a standard German upgrade. You can see it's, I don't know if you can quite read that, but it's actually dated 1914 from the upgrade of that one. It's the 1888-05, because this is, like I said, this would be uh, for the S round, but then again, all of these are, that the Turks converted. You can see it's got the standard pattern, 18, uh, sorry, 1938 pattern stock on there. It even has the uh, bolt tool for the Mauser rifle, and though this, this bolt does not use that tool. It has the uh, standard Mauser style sights on there. It's got the handguard. And what I like about these rifles and all the Turk pattern 1938s I have, you can see those nice big rings on there. Well, the Turks use the basic leather strap. These will take a pattern 1907 US proper shooting sling. 
and I do use them on all of these. I don't have one on here now because it's on the other one of the other rifles, but uh, I do use that. You can see here we have a standard clip of Turkish Shah military ammunition. So we can get a look at the markings on there. Uh, this is from 1944. It's actually a little bit newer than the rifle, but not by much. There we go. We can see it now. 1944. This is on the hot side. As ammunition goes, this is a little bit hot. While uh, some stuff like Persian and Yugoslavian is a little bit milder, it's all military grade, you know, ammunition, which is fine in your uh, your K98, or your Gavir 88, or M24, whatever you have. But you really should avoid it in these. I reserve these rounds for use in like the KKLs, which are basically 1898 German actions. They're heavy duty, three locking lugs, your basic K98 style rifles. So, and you can see here on the muzzle, this one has not seen a lot of use. Because one thing, it has the best head space I think I've ever seen on a Turkish rifle. But look at that. That's pretty good. That shows this rifle probably went right into storage. It was never really issued. Still has very nice bluing on it. So that's as good a bore on any Turkish pattern 1938 rifle you can hope to get. So this one actually will see use. I'm definitely going to shoot this rifle. Just not with this ammunition. I'll be making my own loads for that. As I do have bullet molds for 323 and all of that stuff. So... And some nice commercial brass stashed away. Let's get a look at the other side of the weapon. You can see it takes the basic 1895 style bayonet, which is nothing fancy at all. It's just your basic sticker there. Not even a particular long one for its deck, its era. There's your bolt release right there. Your safety, which is similar to Mauser. And as with most of these Turkish rifles, the bolt on this one does not match the receiver. But fortunately, in this case, it seems to have worked out very well because the headspace is perfect. It's dead on. You can't ask for better. This is a standard 7-packet, 70-round uh, Turkish ammunition belt. Call, uh, bandolier, I'm sorry. With the same ammunition you see here. Back in the early 90s, I used to be able to get that stuff for 3.2 cents a round. 3.2 cents. Think about that today. Good luck, because you're not going to find it that cheap anymore. You can see what I meant about the cutout here. Now, right in this portion here, you can see it's part of the original German modification, which was just a little slope in there. But the Turks, they did a nice job of grinding that down, opening it up, so that when you want to load, it's a simple matter of just right in there like that. Clears nicely, your finger clears, even inlet of the stock slightly, give you a little bit more room. Very nice job they did on these. You really can't find too much to complain about. And I, and I hope they did retreat heat treat this. You can see the little cutout there that was made, probably by the Germans, to clear. Let me put the see if I can do this. Hold on, I gotta kind of do this one-handed. I'll fit the clip in there and Awkward to do one-handed. There we go. Okay. Now, see how that clears? Whoops. That cut out there is so that bullet tip will clear into the magazine. Because the original rounds these were chambering did not. They were th there were three one eighths diameter, the original 1888. Whoops. And you can see the stock is in amazingly good shape. There's no heavy dings, damage, or wear. And all of these rifles, the pattern 1888s, doesn't matter what receiver they used, they all were made to a basic standard style of stock and barrel and length. And, and you've seen, I put up the 19, uh, I'm sorry, the 1893s. But they also used the 1903 actions, which were an 1898 style action, but it was a short action for the 765 cartridge. So it'll also have a little cut out there. And they used, of course, all of the Gavir 88, uh, 98 actions they can get their hands on. And later on, they made their own actions, their own Mauser 98 actions. And uh, those are the most modern rifles, you know, from the 1940s. And there are some real wildcats out there. You can find some of these rifles made with Enfield receivers, with Mosin receivers. Anything they could find, basically, in the 1930s and early 40s to make a rifle out of, they did. Because they were building an arms industry and they, they had to use what they had on hand. The Germans couldn't supply them. First because of the Treaty of Versailles and later because, well, the Germans were at war. 
and the Turks need to rearm because World War I took a heavy toll on their weapons, as all wars tend to do, and they had to come up with a solution. And you'll find a few Czechoslovakian weapons in there, but the Czechs had the, the, uh, ma the Persian contract. So they really couldn't do too much for the Turks between the wars. And they're very smooth actions, too. And they don't have a very bad trigger. There's a little slop in there, not too much, but it's a good let off. See? It's pretty good. And I'm going to get a nice sling to put on there, and this sometime this summer it will be shooting during one of my range trips. So you can see the ammo. It's all ready to go. And that is the Turkish Powder 1938 Gavir 88 05-14. Or technically, really, this is just a Turkish Powder 1938. You really don't call it anything else because it's not a good, it's not an 1888 anymore. Okay.